Hello and welcome to another episode of the Power Law Investor. Today is the 14th of November, 2025, a Friday. And today we're going to be talking about BitTensor. Uh, as I make this video, BitTensor is at $337. Bitcoin is a bit under 95K and Ethereum is around 31.5K. And I wanted to talk about BitTensor today with respect to my PAI way of looking at crypto. It's something that I've been researching for a little while. And the attractive thing about BitTensor is that it is at the nexus of AI and crypto. And we know how much emphasis AI has been getting lately. And even if the crypto market currently is down, uh, the narrative around AI is still very strong. For those of us that have used AI and AI products, we can see that it's going to be changing the game. Now, there's a lot of talk of an AI bubble, but regardless, it's going to have somewhat of an impact. And it definitely is a narrative that can catch fire, particularly in an alt season, right? And alt season is all about finding coins that we have conviction in and holding those through the downs and ups in order to make extraordinary returns. Uh, BitTensor is a, a crypto in which I do not have a position right now. It is something that technically I personally have found difficult to understand, but I can appreciate the narrative around it, and it is one of the premier AI-based coins. And for that reason, it deserves an analysis. And for me, I may consider it as an investment. For now, I don't have a position in it. But the question I wanted to answer was looking at the dynamics of BitTensor, when would be a good time to buy? Right? And that is today what is the, the, the question that we're going to look at and try and answer it. If you are interested in the technical uh, aspects of it, there are a lot of other videos out there. But here I'm really going to be concentrated on it from a price action perspective. Okay. So uh, once again, this is not financial advice. Do your own research. Uh, let's jump into it. And here is the PAI graph. Now, what is the PAI graph? The PAI graph is, or the PA analysis, <clears throat> is a metric from zero to one that is that basically tells us when is a relatively good time to buy and relatively good time to be cautious, right? The bluer it is, the closer the value is to zero. And as you can see on this visual chart, those zeros get triggered off the lower that we go, right? The lower values get triggered off. Now, this is a, a real-time uh, metric. It's not look forward. So <clears throat> every value here is generated only based on data that is coming from the past, right? So if you're looking at this data over here on the 12th of <clears throat> December 2008, it is, all, it is the data from that day and everything looking backwards. So every PAI is for every asset is unique because it looks back on the history of that own particular asset and learns from that history in order to present a comprehensive picture. The more data we give it, the more accurate it becomes. So for younger assets like Tau, it may not be as accurate as it is for older assets such as Ethereum. That being said, it can still provide us useful information. And as you can see visually, it's doing a really good job of calling the bottoms, right? Along this time, at this point over here, it's learning. So it's learning all the way from, say, July 2023, gets to July 2024. At this point, it's still firing blue values, dark blue values. It says this is a zero PAI. And then it continues to say, hey, this keeps on going low PAIs as the price goes lower, but it's learning throughout this process, right? And so the next time that we have a dip in the market, it learned from that previous uh, exposure to these lower prices and said, oh, uh, here is what I think is our better times to buy based on what I've seen in the past. The more information we give it, the more accurate it becomes. And again, like I said, this is causal in the sense that it only looks at data in the past. It isn't, I'm not calculating all of these values based on today. This is actually what you'd find in the moment. And so if we look at this, we can see that the price of uh, BitTensor today at about 341 is uh, at a PAI of 334. Right, 0.334. And when we look at that, we can just click off these. You can see that it has gone lower than that in the past, right? So this is when it had been to 334, et cetera. But there are lower peaks even in the recent past, like say around September when it went down to 297, but also the PAI triggered at the same time, right? And the PAI would be telling you, hey, we're at a PAI of 0.274. 
So relative to the history, that would be a better time to be buying rather than at PAI of, say, 0.506, right? So it can do a good job of identifying tops and bottoms, and it's more accurate at identifying the bottom rather than the top, because at the top range, you can have explosively upward movement. So it's a time to be cautious and perhaps reduce exposure, but it's not a guaranteed sell signal. Right? So if we look at that, we're getting at a PAI value of 0.334 right now. Let me turn on annotations, right? And so what does that mean? Does that mean it's a good time to buy? What can we expect? So just looking at the colors, you can see that we likely have headroom on the bottom, but there's no guarantee that we might get it, right? We know that the crypto market is in a state of fear right now. Uh, if we look here, uh, let's see if we have the fear and greed. Here we go. So it, it is in the market. Uh, we're at a, at a 22 reading on the fear and greed index. And so the market is also oversold on the RSI. So <clears throat> if the fear continues, of course, we might get lower prices, but maybe the fear ends and prices take off. So there's no guarantee of that happening. But it does give us an idea relative on the pricing where we are, right? And if we want to understand how much lower we could potentially go in terms of time, here's the uh, the PAI, the time that you spend in each of those prices, right? It's not the price that you have, but the time that we spend in each of those prices using this PAI, PAI zone distribution. And as you can see, we are at this value about between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, about 20% of the time, but there's a lot of headroom below. And in fact, if we look at this cumulative graph, right, which adds up all these different bars, so the this bar over here is the sum of this bar and this bar, this bar over here is the sum of the point 0 to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, and 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, we're roughly in about the 40-ish percent time zone, right, which means that we get lower prices about 40% of the time based on this PAI metric. So with that in mind, to me, it is not a particularly attractive time to buy because I think prices could easily get lower, right? And so it's kind of ratios that I like are 20% are downside and 80% upside. That feels like a much more secure bet to me. But on the other side, there's no guarantee for getting that particular price, right? So if we look at this graph over here, the PAI predictions, uh, this is telling us, given the current PAI level that we have, what sort of PAI action we can see in the next 30 days, the next 60 days, and the next 90 days. And these are predictions that have been validated mathematically and results in this thing called the Breyer score, right? The Breyer score is a measure of saying when this particular forecaster calls for something happening 70% of the time, it does happen 70% of the time, right? And so this graph over here tells us what is the probability of touching these different PAI levels, not where it's going to end up, right? So currently we're at this gold level over here, about 341, and it has these particular probabilities of hitting these different price levels. Now, for me, this is very powerful because I can see at a glance, hey, what is my expected downside if I were to buy today? What could happen? And what is the chance that I'd be able to get a lower price, right? So, for example, in the next 30 days, according to this, which is mathematically validated, right? And, and the Breyer score basically is between what you'd get in, 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 uh, in competitive sports markets and what you'd get as a weather forecast, for example, for tomorrow's weather, right? So that degree of reliability. Of course, tomorrow's weather could be uh, wrong, but most of the time, if I'm predicting tomorrow's weather today, I'm pretty good. So as you can see, it falls between the, uh, it falls in the around the football match category, a little lower than that, and a little, a little lower than the uh, tomorrow's weather, but a little bit better than most football matches uh, or NFL matches, closing lines, for example, right? And so looking at this chart, the easiest way to understand it is that, hey, these are the probabilities of what is likely going to happen in this mathematically validated way. What sort of PAI values can I expect? And what it's saying at today's value of about $341, there's a 61 chance, 67% chance in the next, next 30 days that we get a value of uh, 317 with a PAI of 0.3. And then if you look at it 60 days in advance, the forecast becomes less accurate when we're looking forward. You can see the probability of 
hitting downwards increases because we just can't predict as well, right? For 60 days in advance, so we bounce around a lot more. And you can do the same thing for 90 days, but the reliability of the forecast goes down. And so when I look at this, it gives me an idea that for my kind of risk reward ratio, I would want to wait for lower PAIs to kick in. And whether that's in the 30, 60, or 90 day format, right? What it's telling me is, hey, if there is a 51% chance for me to get the price at a discount of, you know, 20% from where we are now, that is a better place for me to be at personally with my investing. Right? And this is, of course, if I believe in the long-term conviction of this particular asset. There's no guarantee that it's going to hit this particular value, but it's a probability, right? No one knows what's going to happen. The best we can say is, oh, I think there's a chance of this can happen. I think the market is going up. I think the market is going down, which is what most crypto bros are telling you. But with this particular methodology, we're able to actually look at those probabilities and know that we validated in the past with my your, the own tests on 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 bit tensors to so be able to figure out, hey, this is accurate. When it says there's a 51% of chance of this happening, it happens about 51% of the time. It's not 100% of the time, but it's 51% of the time. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And so for me right now, the takeaway is, hey, I would want to wait for lowered prices. How much lowered prices? Probably something between about 256 to two, maybe around the 250-ish mark. I don't know whether we get there, You're right? It says there's a 34% chance, but I'm willing to be patient for that to happen. And to give you sort of a, a more dynamic approach on what's actually happening here, we can look at this sort of dynamic map, right? That is looking at what the values have been previously in the past. So if you look at this graph over here, the upper graph is I'm saying, this is the, this is the PAI that was generated in real time where I had to go back in uh, September 9th or September 4th, 2024. And you can see this is the PAI distribution. Now at this time, the algorithm has a lot less data, so it can't give us much more than saying, hey, there's a chance that it goes through a whole huge range. But you can see the predominance of the price, there's definitely, I have to move this around, the, the predominance of the price is that there is possibility to go lower, but this little dashed green arrow, green line, as you can see, that's basically saying that the mass of expectations is more on the top, so prices are likely going to rise. Right? And it also gives us a quantification of what that is. It is not an accurate mathematical representation, but it gives you an idea of what the math is basically saying. What is the most likely range that we expect to reach? Again, if we go to ranges that are at the top, right, the PAI is sort of giving us a red line over here and it's saying, hey, I expect lower prices. So at this time on uh, 12th December, on December, December 10th, 2024, the PAI is at 0.466, which you can see with that gold value there. But that little, that red dotted line underneath is showing that, hey, likely we are going to see expected prices to drop because the mass of probabilities is at the bottom. Right? Again, here's another example. If we go right to the bottom over here, the PAI value is 0 0.043. Uh, this is on the four, was it the April 3rd, 2025. The price is at $215. The PAI is close to a bottom, and you can see that the, the predictions are saying, hey, there's a mass of probabilities pulling the price up, so the expectations are quite good. Now, this is for 90 days forward, but you sort of get the idea of, of how this works. And so if we come to today's price, right, the expectation is slightly green. It's at 383 versus our current price of 341. But that's not a huge jump from where we are. It's definitely not near what we've seen in the bottoms. Now, again, the caveat here is it doesn't mean we're going to get a bottom. It doesn't mean we're even going to see this expected price. It's just the balance of probabilities, which is the best that I can do without being able to go into the future and then come back. And so this is a really probabilistic framework that helps me make valuable decisions. So when I look at this, I think, okay, you know, there's a 90% chance that in the next 90 days, I'm going to hit 363. From today's 341, that's not enough of an increase for me to really justify initiating a position. 
because there's also considerable downside, right? There's an 81% chance I could hit 330 or a significant chance, you know, that I could even hit 274 at 37% or so. So that gives me a little framework to work in. It's not, uh, it, it can't be completely right because that would mean we have to go into the future and then come back. But it does give us a really probabilistic, validated mathematical framework of looking at these and then coming up with a an answer like, okay, this feels right to me based on my particular risk profile. So uh, that's where we are with Tau uh, BitTensor. I think it may be a great opportunity at a lower price. I definitely feel that the narrative around AI is quite strong in this cycle, and crypto plus AI could result in explosive gains, but uh, we aren't there yet, right? And uh, for that, uh, I would just I'm just going to wait until it hits at a lower price, and then I'd consider opening a position at that price. I hope this has been helpful. Please sign up for updates at powerlawinvestor.com for these charts and uh, and much much more. And uh, do like and subscribe for the video. All the best, and see you in the next one.